In this video, we are talking turbo and boost in an RC drift car. What is it? Like, what does it do? How do you need to use it with your RC drift car? That's what I'm going to try to answer here today. If you're new to the channel, welcome. My name is Troy. This is Roadside RC. You'll tend to find me bashing or crawling or drifting or racing, plus doing product review videos and how to's. And as we start this video, I'm going to assume you've already done some basic like Google foo about what is motor timing. I'm going to guess that you understand the basics of like what timing means in a motor so in this video we're going to use this is the Hobbywing XR10 Pro I have the Hobbywing app here loaded on my phone with the OTA programmer so we can data log and I can show you live as we make timing changes from boost and turbo what difference does that make to the wheel speed speed that we have here and what is overall timing in the motor how does that work what i'm going to start with is i'm going to start by giving you a baseline of rpm wheel motor rpm which translates of course to wheel speed versus throttle with zero timing i've taken all the boost i've taken all the turbo out and the motor actually is fixed timing the one that i have on here so i can't even change that so in a no boost no turbo situation as you're on throttle what kind of RPM do you get? What we have here, this is throttle percent along the bottom, 20, 40, 60, 80, 100 percent throttle. And then on the y-axis is the RPM of the motor as read directly from the Hobbywing app. And so what you get here is you get this kind of curve. We got a maximum of 34,000 RPM. It's a mostly straight line. So now what happens when we start to modify this? What happens, I can't actually change the timing on the motor physically itself. That's the first place that you can change timing on your motor, but I have a way to cheat it. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna add about 10 degrees of timing to the motor itself, and I'm gonna redo this. And so what do you think is gonna happen? I think we're gonna end up with a, we're gonna still start at zero, of course, but I think we're gonna end up with a slightly increased angle here. So that's what we're gonna do. We're not gonna do boost, we're not doing turbo, we're just adding a baseline of timing to the whole motor. So now with plus 10 degrees of timing in the motor, what you can see, of course, down here at the low end, it didn't really make much difference, but you can just see the spread there. So we ended up with about 3,000 more RPM at the top end of the RPM band just by adding 10 degrees of mo uh, timing into the motor across the board. So now the question comes is, what happens with boost? Now we're drawing a different little graph here. So this is the timing of the motor. This is the RPM. So a lot of motors start somewhere around 30 degrees of timing at the beginning. When you go in and you add boost, or maybe I'm gonna add, you know, 15 degrees of boost, and you're gonna tell it a specific RPM. You're gonna tell it that I want my boost to start at around 20,000 RPM, and I want it to all come in by, let's say, 40,000 RPM. So what's gonna happen is, as you go through the RPM band, it's gonna stay at 30, but then once it hits 20, it's gonna start adding in your 15 degrees of boost, but it's gonna all get there, so that means that we're gonna get up to 45 degrees, but it's gonna not get there until you come all the way over here to 40,000 RPM. So it's going to gradually increase the timing in that RPM range. And then once it gets to the other side, it's gonna level back out again. So that's exactly what we're gonna do now. We're gonna go in, what we were just seeing was that we were getting somewhere between zero and 35, 37,000 uh, RPM. So we're gonna go in and we're gonna tell it to start adding boost around 20%, um, around 10,000 RPM, and we're gonna tell it to stop, maybe somewhere around 30,000 RPM, and see how this curve looks different. So in this test, what I did is I took that motor timing back out, made that back to zero. I added that boost in, and what you see again here, it's kinda of hard because I ran out of pen, so I have a real thick one here. But it was basically the same RPM down here at the bottom end, which makes sense, because as the timing's coming in, it's only adding a little bit of timing, right? But then as it hits, you can see because it was 15 degrees, not 10 degrees of total timing added, we continue to stretch up here and we continue to get more motor RPM once all of that timing was built in. So it made a little bit of difference here. So unlike the blue line with timing in the motor and it's kind of a percentage across the whole way, it didn't do anything until the time in which we told it to hit and then it, then it ramped that in. Something that's really important to consider 
with boost is this duration right here. This duration right here is how long over what RPM span do you have this timing coming in. Now the narrower, the smaller you make that window, the sharper up this angle is going to be. And it's going to make a pretty big step and it's going to maybe be a very aggressive driving experience. For drifting, we want a smooth throttle and so a lot of the times in drifting you want to really spread this number out so that the angle of this build in here, the angle of the boost increase is a lot less and so you don't get any kind of jerkiness in your driving. Now the other thing of course that you have to consider is over here. So that is of course how much total timing that you're adding. That also may it plays into how aggressive that feels. The difference as we move on to turbo here, the difference is it's not RPM based. Turbo is throttle based. So it's only throwing in additional timing whenever you hit full throttle. So let's throw some timing in and see what it does. Ah, so this is kind of fun. So what I did again, I took the base timing back out I took boost back out and I put in 25 degrees of turbo to hit instantly at full throttle. And so what you'll see is the line actually stayed, of course, as you would imagine, exactly with the original red line. It stayed all the way up here to right here. This is 95% of throttle. And then it hits all the way up to, this was right at 50,000 RPM up here huge jump in RPM as we added in that 25 degrees of timing. So you can see that what we're doing, we didn't, we wouldn't have controlled anything down here in the lower ends of the throttle. That would have all been exactly the same. But then when we need that kick, when we need that full throttle hit to really sling a car into a corner, we have a whole lot of extra RPM and we have it real fast in order to help us with that. Now I'm going to put back in the tune that I had in the car before and we're going to see what happens with I'm going to leave the motor timing at zero, but I'm going to put back in boost and turbo and we're going to add all this together. It, uh, it kind of went off the chart here. So again, because turbo doesn't kick in until the end and I had my boost coming in a little bit later, lower RPMs here basically unchanged. It was like 18 and a half or 19 or something here. It gets up to 26 here, so just a little bit up. It gets up to 34 here as I put in uh, 20 degrees of boost. But then when that 25 degrees of turbo hits, 70,000 RPM. So remember, when we started without turbo and boost as you're drifting, you're at 34,000 RPM. Now we're double that. We're legitimately double that at that higher end whenever you've thrown in that turbo and the boost. So I want to be clear that I'm using the motor RPM here as a proxy. I don't really care what the motor RPM is. Honestly, what I care about is wheel speed. I care about how fast those rear tires are spinning. And in certain situations, as you go around a drift track, you need higher and lower wheel speed. And depending on how you drive your driving style, size of your track, you need different wheel speeds, right? Like a really small track, you're not gonna need nearly as much. A bigger track, you're gonna need a lot more. Now you're gonna immediately be like, but Troy, I can just, instead of doing all this shenanigans, I can just put a bigger pinion on there. But if you think about that chart, in that graph and if you have just a bigger pinion you're going to be spinning more rpms the whole band so that's why turbo and boost is so important when it comes to rc drifting in your throttle control because what we want is we need we, we i'm going to say need we want that 70,000 ish rpm rear wheel speed right whatever that ends up rear wheel speed translates to we need that for some of those long straightaways some of those big corners some of those hard flicks that's what we want that for but on the other hand what we want is down in the lower throttle ranges lower rpm bands we want a really smooth curve so we want this curve that kind of comes in smooth and then kicks up at the end you can do that a little bit with esc tuning as well um, just from like a like a exponential kind of kind of mindset, but just getting this alone with just a pinion gear leaves a little bit to be desired. So that's why we're doing this. We get that big spike of power when we need it, but yet can also have that low speed throttle modulation that we want. But a word of warning with all this stuff. More timing, if you've done any research on motors at all, you'll know more timing is less torque, 
which is okay. We don't really need it in a car like this. Uh, less torque, it is also a lot more heat. So you, every time you add more and more timing, you're adding heat and you're actually using a lot more power to get that RPM out of the wheels. And so you're gonna have lower battery longevity. So batteries are gonna die quicker. You're gonna have to step up to a higher quality battery as well, especially to deal with that turbo and that hit. But you're gonna wanna watch your total like temperature and heat of your motor and your ESC, because it takes a lot of work to be able to provide that. So if you get it too hot and you can start cooking stuff, also, there is a limit to how much total timing you can add to a motor when you think about what that timing is actually doing. You know, you get up to you get up to some, you know, bigger numbers of timing and you can maybe actually be physically breaking something in your motor. Also, I was doing this for the test and for this video, but like holding it at wide open throttle to read an RPM while it's at 70,000 RPM with the wheels off the ground, probably not great for the motor. There's a lot of stuff in there spinning around really fast. So please be careful with that kind of stuff. I don't want you to watch this and then go blow your own motor up and then be mad at me. And then I think at the end of the day, there's no right answer here. This is something that fortunately it costs zero dollars to tune. So once you have an ESC and a tuner, it doesn't cost you anything to try different boost settings, different turbo settings, and see what works for you, for your car, for your track. So I hope this was useful. Uh, this is viewer request. Viewer request has been kind of hounding me to provide a boost and turbo video. And so if this was useful for you, please let me know down in the comments. If you have any questions about what I did, did I leave something out that you really wanted to know or leave something out that you think is a really good thing that others need to know? Leave those down in the comments as well and I'll be happy to talk to you about them down there. If you're curious about anything else drift tech related, be a playlist, my drift tech playlist popping up over here to your right. I hope to see you in one of those videos. Thank you and goodbye.